I, the really realistically was if I lost all the money, I wasn't going to be that fussed. But because I knew it was in a Vanguard and they're sort of an investment company that are well known to sort of manage your money well, um, that it, that would happen. Um, albeit it still can happen. Um, but yeah, so great. Yeah, that's sort of what. I- Hello, welcome to the McEwen Brother Podcast. This week, you join myself, Gregor McEwen, with Jamie McEwen. Now, I'm just going to preface this episode that. This is not investment advice or financial advice, but this week we are talking about Vanguard. And what you'll do in this episode is learn how Vanguard works and what it is, the costs and benefits of using Vanguard and our experience of it. We'll also cover how to get started in Vanguard and also we'll discover a bit about our experience, our own individual experience of using Vanguard. Jamie, do you want to give us an outline of what Vanguard is and how it works? Yeah, so Vanguard is basically one of the largest issuers of mutual funds in the world um, and the second largest issuer of exchange traded funds, um, other known wise as ETFs. Um, it's a platform for basically um, investors to get started in investing with low cost fees um, and really get an um, opportunity to invest in a broad range of um, different stocks and shares. What kind of shares can you invest in, Jimmy? So um, when you first start on Vanguard, they basically you have a few options when you get started. Um, you have a wide range of sort of different shares and stuff you can get into. But one thing you need to do to get started is get an account set up. So they have a few different options. One of them is called uh, Vanguard ISA. You can also set up a junior ISA. Um, these are basically tax free. So if you can put them into up to £20,000 or £4,000, I think it is, per year, Gregor. Is that correct? Um, into these I believe accounts, there's a... Twenty thousand pounds uh, tax free you're allowed with an investment ISA in the UK, I believe. Yeah, um, and then the other sort of few ones they have on the the, the platform is um, a general account for investing, uh, personal pension sort of plans, or personal sort of financial planning. So if you've got any sort of plans you're sort of working around or trying to hit certain goals, um, these are sort of the basic ones you can get started in. Um, when it comes to sort of what's available. To get invested in so you have a few different things you've got blended funds equity and fixed income Gregor, is there any chance you can sort of expand and sort of what these sort of things are for our audience of course so a uh, fund uh, with vanguard is effectively a uh, accumulation of different investments that a fund manager has invested in themselves and these funds are managed by these these managers and what you do as an individual investor you pick your fund and you're putting money together cum- cumulatively as a percentage share effectively of this individual fund. And that fund may go up in price, may go down in price based on the shares that are within this fund. And what it does, it's an option to spread your risk effectively. You're, instead of investing in one company, you're in a fund and this fund has perhaps 200 companies and you're spreading your risk amongst 200 companies, perhaps maybe within a certain sector or a mix of sectors. And it's the fund manager's job to make sure that shares in that fund perform well. And that's kind of covering that, Jimmy. So do you, do you want to maybe touch on something else that we want to cover? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's basically your sense is it's, it's a safe way of getting started in investment. Um, and one of the things that's the safe way of doing it, as you said, it's like um, when I was seeing exchange treaty funds, that's that sort of balance of basically being to spread the cost of investing through a wide range of different stocks. Um, definitely a good way. Me and Gregor obviously have both have our accounts ourselves because that we wanted to spread the risk. We're not um, investors ourselves, so we're looking at sort of ways to get started, but be into a portfolio that's getting managed by a company that manages over you know millions of pounds every single year or every single month. They're constantly sort of um, keeping up to trades, knowing what's going on in the world um, and making sure their, their investments are constantly growing um, year and year. So it's a perfectly way, good way for an investor to get started to make that sort of money. Um, girl, with investing in the company, understand obviously everything platform when you get started, people get worried about fees, sort of how much it can cost to get into these sort of um, industry. Um, obviously me and you have talked about before sort of different investment platforms that we've used. Um, what's the sort of cost of investing through Vanguard. Yes, you're totally right. Some platforms cost you an arm and a leg just to invest in single stocks. And then you're like, that puts individual investors, newbies off because you maybe don't have all the money in the world and 10% of your investment is just going on an account fee or one investment fee. So this is why we are kind of echoing uh, advertising. Uh, We back Vanguard as an option because 
effectively account fees are very low. Um, so uh, there's an ongoing account fee of 0.515% per year. There's a fund manage- management fee, which is kind of 0.22%. And then there's kind of additional fund transactional fees as well, which are kind of fees that the investment manager has as he's buying and selling shares within the fund. But everybody's accountable for this and you get a small fee for that as well. So these are small percentages. And just to give you an idea of what this is, Jamie, and how this could cost over a year. Say you had £20,000 in your ISA, um, that would equate to kind of £82 a year of fees. So very small. And because, you know, ideally these funds are going up in value, you know, you're, you're covering your costs already with that. There is actually um, a minimum account fee as well for getting set up. So I like what you're saying, Jimmy, when you're setting up an account, all these accounts you have options to, there's a £500 minimum account fee. So obviously you have maybe have a, a little bit of cash to get set up, but once you're set up, you can set up direct debits as well to invest, uh, continue topping up your account and make sure investments are working for you or your cash is working for you effectively. There's, there's a couple of other things I think we need to make aware, uh, people aware of, Jimmy. There's things called how kind of liquid is your cash. So basically because you are investing, it's not a bank account where you can take money out the same day instantly. There is a kind of period, grace period, where if you do request money out of your account, it can take up to five working days. My, me and myself, you know, I've had experience with that. You know, you've got cash invested. You're thinking, I need, I need a bit of money out or the money could be used elsewhere. So you ask, you request the money out and it can take up to five working days. So that's worth knowing as well. How long to get started? You mentioned, Jimmy, getting started with these accounts. Um, they do say it can take up to three weeks just for all the ver- verification documents to go through on their end. But from our experience, Jimmy, I'm sure well aware, it's a lot quicker than that. Almost, yeah. almost a couple of days, really, just getting started. Um, yeah, so, as, yeah, I know, you're totally right. As a beginner, um, anybody kind of think about investing Vanguard, where where should they maybe start? So, um, in terms of getting started on um, Vanguard, um, obviously, as you said, you've got forms and stuff to fill out. So, um, you can go, obviously, straight into the Search Vanguard's um, website, and there'll be one of the first ones that come up. Um, and obviously just fill out the form, send out your data um, and get started into it. But um, what sort of shares and what things would you get started in? Is that your sort of question, Gregor? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, like what would a novice invest in? So um, in terms of sort of the different funds, as we talked about at the start, sort of the different um, spread and risk ones. So you've got different ones sort of like blended funds um, is better than sort of individual stocks. So say you were going on to sort of, sort of websites such as Free Trade and you're looking to you know invest in like Tesla or Amazon and stuff like that, you can invest in them. Or you can do um, a blended fund, which we're talking about at the start. It basically spreads your risk over several different companies. Um, it's the idea of, you know, you've got the S&P 500, you, you, you're spreading your risk over 500 different companies that are sort of the highest performers uh, or, you know, sort of good ones to get started in um, and reduce the risk of you losing your money. Not to be said it can't happen. Um, it's all about sort of where the market is going, overall trend that's kind of going on. But the other ones you sort of have in sort of Vanguard's options to get started are um, is called equity or fixed income funds. Um, these are the two different ones. Fixed, or well, equity, sorry, I should start off with. Equity um, is basically the total sort of capital of uh, businesses divided into small units known as an equity share. Um, this is where an investor sort of like subscribes to an equity share of a company, contributes to to the total capital of the business and it becomes like a shareholder so that's sort of a different sort of options you go into these ones are sort of um such as the uh, ones that is all world dividend which is an option to basically put some money into um they'll have basically a set sort of how to, how to say it gregor uh i guess those shares it. those shares have higher dividends right yeah so like so higher dividends sort of so it's just Oh, sorry, I'll continue. Basically, have a came to me. Uh, have a different sort of. Each share has a dividend, and what they do is they invest that all world dividend yield is basically all companies that have dividends, and what they do is they create a market price for all these companies that they're invested in, and have an average dividend that they pay out from all of the companies. Um, the current um, number of stocks in that sort of one to give you an example is they invest over. 1,700 different companies that all pay a dividend. So every sort of period throughout the year, you'll receive a dividend from your money that you've invested in that. Like the average price of their 
all world dividend and Vanguard is worth forty eight pound, and say the dividend's worth like three percent, you get you know ten twenty pound depending sort of um how much money you've got invested sort of in that. That was not the best example. I completely understand that, but um that's sort of different ones you can get into, and then you also have ones called fixed income. Uh, fixed income is an investment approach used on our sort of preservation of capital and income. These are normally done in like sort of government and corporate bonds. I, Gregor, are you able to sort of expand on sort of how these sort of ones work? Yeah, so effectively, without getting into too much detail, a lot of uh, bonds that you can get are maybe issued by governments, and it's basically a loan that a government's issued to stock market and you can invest in it and if, ideally these are uh, a couple years long before you can get money out or um, there's basically more tie in with your cash so what vanguard sometimes does you have an option to invest in these as well but it's mostly the blended funds that me and jamie are in at the moment where they use these fixed income to lower the risk of uh, an equities market share investment that you're talking about, Jimmy, with investing in companies. Because yeah. on the stock market, companies are more risky. But if you have a government issued bond, um, the idea is that you're guaranteed the payment at the end of your term. So it's less risk, right? So a blended fund basically will have like a portfolio of these two mixed, and you can kind of jump from like 20% all the way up to 100% uh, equity share. So you can have 100% in, in, com- in companies within the market, and that's the, they regard as the highest risk um, fund. And then you can have a 20% blended fund, which is mostly made it up of bonds, uh, fixed income assets, where you're guaranteed to maybe get a return on your money. Now, with everything, risk carries reward. So the higher risk one ideally has performed better in previous years than the lower risk, higher bonds uh, percentage funds. So... Jamie, do you want to maybe touch on your experience with choosing and maybe what you might advise? I guess we don't advise, but we want to maybe give everybody an outline of that mix. And do you think it's going to be better to spread your risk? I know you have shares in the dividends one, which is quite interesting. Can you touch on that? Yeah, Yeah, so obviously, uh, yeah, I've got the dividend one set up. That's just for myself. I I want an income stream that's um, pretty consistent throughout the year. But the other one is we're talking about the blended strategy. So in Vanguard, the sort of two sort of uh, main blended strategy ones that they have is called a lifestyle strategy. So we've got a 100% lifestyle strategy and then we've also got a retirement target one. The one that me and Gregor are invested in is a 100% lifestyle strategy, which is one of the highest risk one um, that they have. This one's uh, sort of an 80-20 split between stocks and bonds. Um, With that, obviously inherits sort of more risk of it you know going more volatile so we can lose sort of how much we sort of money that we've got invested in it and um, but one of the things that took me with the reason why i went with this one is uh, bonds in terms of sort of inflation and sort of um even just um the standard sort of inflation we have every year and um, the lower one might have not actually do cover the sort of inflation so what it would be is wouldn't make as much money albeit it's less risk so i've got an option to basically make the same money so so we went for the 20 percent lifestyle strategy on which is 80 percent bonds 20 percent shares i could have made um enough money to cover inflation so my money's not lost anything and i'll make maybe a little bit extra but what i was looking at is as a young individual being only 21 thinking the money for me at the moment isn't too precious i'd rather take the higher risk to sort of opportunity to actually have more money to make more money within the year um i've seen that um if i realistically was if i lost all the money i wasn't going to be that fast but because i knew it was in a vanguard and they're sort of an investment company that are well known to sort of manage your money well um that it, that wouldn't happen um albeit it still can happen um but yeah so great that's sort of what i reason i went for 100 percent lifestyle strategy because i thought I'd rather have the higher risk to sort of cover sort of the aspect of inflation. So, you know, if you have money, a hundred pound in the bank last this time last year, and you've not done a single thing with it, that money's technically worth less now due to inflation. So my thought was may as well stick it into something such as um, Vanguard's to get started in. Um, because I know that that money is not going to be worth, it's going to be a higher chance of being worth more than leaving it. Definitely. So, I, that's where that I'm going with back. it. Mm-hmm. Sorry. 
I was going to say that, I guess that comes back to our reasons for using Vanguard and just in general investing. I'm thinking from somebody yeah. who's maybe not had experience of investing, uh, it's quite daunting really. And I guess if you have somebody to bounce ideas off with, like you investing in the dividend, all world dividend uh, fund, Jamie, you know, it's quite interesting from my point of view being like, oh, why are you doing it? What's your idea around it? And you just explained it there quite well, I think. Now, I don't I haven't invested in that fund myself. And, you know, it makes me think. So I think as a piece of advice for somebody looking to get started, maybe have somebody you can bounce ideas off with, uh, set up the account together, um, you know, put a bit of cash together aside and maybe have a catch up once a week as an idea and be like, what are you doing? What's your plan? And that means that, you know, you're not alone in, in your journey investing. I, I know me and Jamie do it, and I think it works quite well. What's your thoughts on that, Jamie? Would you advise perhaps an investment partner almost? I, don't, I wouldn't say an investment partner. I just think it's good to have someone to chat with because if you're seeing a partner, you're you're almost saying you're investing with them. But I would do it as a, a, if you know someone in your family or someone that you're related to or are friends with that has done investing for even for a few years, see what they're up to, see how they're getting on, ask them questions and just learn, taking the information and Obviously, we are just providing our advice because me and Gregor have done it for, you know, how long have we been doing it now? Three years, Gregor? A couple of years? Yeah, probably probably up to three years now. Um, not, not that long, it's up to but um, it's it's definitely, you know, being able to learn and kind of understand how, the, how it works, basically, uh, to a level that allows us to talk about it, I think. Now, we also want to touch on how we use it for myself. I'm currently using it as a means to basically maintain... Uh, above inflation uh, growth for my money, whereas the banks are providing like less than 1%. They're like, oh, I need to put my money somewhere else. So I'm using it for that, but I'm also using it as a place to perhaps save for a property. Uh, so first home fund, basically. So I feel like it's a good option for that because it's relatively safe. I've okay to take the risk with it going up and down, um, hence why it's in there as well. So it's better than being in the bank and losing what inflation is like what over seven percent now or something like that and yeah. ideally in the past it's four percent so you're kind of looking to get above five percent income uh from your assets or the cash invested so that's yeah. the goal um jimmy do you have a i've touched on my maybe i've used it do you do you have a yeah. goal in mind because obviously that's what important is important do yeah, you have so an idea I, of what you want to do with it i think it's really interesting to say that you've obviously so you like both me and you have discussed this before, had plenty of conversations, obviously, like your goal is using that money to put down a down payment on either one or two properties or just get yourself started in the sort of um, owning a property or getting yourself on the ladder, as you would say. Yeah. Um, for myself, it's it's a long-term thing. It's sort of money that, I, every money that goes into Vanguard is something I probably won't touch for many years my goal is to see it grow i want to see the, the compounding growth and um, as you know the compound growth sort of chart is shown to um exponentially grow so my my, my thing with you Greg, i was actually going to fire this question back at yourself is do you not feel a bit worried about taking that sort of money out like obviously you, when you put a down payment on a property um do you, like you're going to take most of it out and then be left with not a lot in there is that not a bit of a worry? Because you're basically highlighting to us that you're saving. That's basically what you're, you've done with your savings. Your your idea is like a, your savings pot has been transferred to Vanguard. So it's actually making money instead of sitting, as I said, not losing money because of interest. Um, do you not feel a bit thing of like that's maybe not the best idea? Would you not rather have a, a split or? That's a really good question. And I can see where you're coming from. Um, there is going to be, you know, ideally there'll be a day where I actually have to use it and the money's going to come out. But my idea is it's not going to be used for an asset that is perhaps going to depreciate. So it's another investment that I'll be using the money for. So effectively, it's not a non-investment that I'm moving it into. I'm not going to buy a car and lose £10,000 as soon as I drive it anywhere or anything like that. It's another investment, so I'm happy with that. I do get worried about, you know, when you log in, every kind of week or whatever just check on your balance and then that's going to be zero or whatever it's going to be that does make me go like oh i'm gonna not have that growth or there'll be nothing to grow you know yeah. you just build it up again and i do think right now it's my the mo i think it's the most logical choice right now to have a relatively safe investment um 
generating uh, capital growth. It has got obviously some uh, dividends coming through as well. And my idea is, yes, I am using it as a saving, savings device at the moment to then have a future uh, large purchase and another investment. But I am viewing the property as another investment, which I guess you could argue it's not, um, depending on how you use it and what our plans are. The other side of it is, you know, should I be using that cash for something else outside of uh, a savings account, which is what I'm using for at the moment, effectively. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult question. I think it's the safest one that I'm doing with the highest risk that I'm happy to have with the funds that I'm invested in rather than being it stored in a bank generating little to nothing. That's my logic. Does that make sense yeah. to you? Do you think that makes sense? Uh, or I mean, would you I, do I something mean, different? Um, I think, well, I know obviously both our situations, we've got, me and Gregor not only have obviously our Vanguard, this is obviously slightly off, off the top of this episode, but we've both got our um, saving pot for um, the first buy. First, um, help to buy help funds. To buy. Yeah help to buy fund uh, that we're both putting money into every month, which obviously the way I look at it is like, you should be looking at, for me with you, I would be looking at using that and then finding the money elsewhere to pull together for the property um, and leave your Vanguard to grow and compound. Um, Because my thought process is you taking that sort of lump sum money out, the more money that's in it, it's higher chances to compound quicker and then mm-hmm. once it compounds quicker, it will grow faster and that side of things. So um, it's interesting. Everyone's got their own sort of investment. This is what why we're doing this episode. Everyone's, we're trying to give you advice, sort of, no, not advice, it's more sort of a um, knowledge to sort of what I, we do. Um, yes, and what a bit of our outlook to. as well, yeah. Um, and I think uh, everyone's sort of to their own of what they're looking to do, because for me, the, that money that we've got for the help to buy fund is that's what's going to fund my first property um obviously having other funds such as uh, you know sort of emergency funds to have aside sort of in your own savings then also having vanguard to invest um, and then also i quite like to have a bit of fun with your you know sort of personal investing so um i think it's just about having a balance to everything um, but no, it's been good episode, Gary. I think um, this is sort of a good outlook to sort of what Vanguard to offer you. It's you know fairly cheap to start, five hundred pounds. You could easily save a hundred pound a month. So within five months, you could get started in it. The fees are low. It's a really simple strategy to get into it if you want to get started in something. The lifestyle strategy ones are really good to um, sort of get started on. They're a good blend of sort of bonds and stocks. You can read into them as well. So if you want to download their um, key investor information for each one, you can do that. Um, I would definitely sort of uh, highlight it. would be worthwhile having a look into it, see what they've got to offer. There are other companies out there that are doing very similar things, but um, Vanguard is one that me and Gregor use and we want you to inform you, give you guys a little bit of information about it um, so you can either make the decision for yourself. Um, thank you, Gregor. Have you got anything else to say for anyone, for the audience? I just want to say, yeah, Jamie, you've summed up lovely there. And yeah, so we've covered a bit about how we use it, um, what it is, and how we plan to use it going forward. And obviously, we'll probably have an update later on in the year regarding our investments and what we're doing with our money at the moment. And that's most likely going to change. So yeah, stay in the loop. Um, You'll get an update uh, at some point in the year regarding how we're still using Vanguard and perhaps maybe other tools that come out as well and other investment strategies that me and Jamie are doing at the moment as well, which I think could be quite interesting. Um, Thanks again for hanging around and hopefully we'll tune in next week and we'll have you back as a listener listening in. Um, Check our description of the episode. We'll share some resources for you uh, to give you an outline of where to get started as well if you're interested. And yeah, thanks again for listening. Thank you guys. Have a lovely evening, morning or good afternoon. See you later. (laughs) See you later.